I greet you in Jesus' name. May I speak in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life. During this stewardship season, we continue to consider our priorities, commitments, and responsibilities to God. The question put to Jesus in today's Gospel reading about the payment of taxes makes us think particularly about our attitudes towards our time, treasure and talents. In the Gospel story we read, some of the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Herodians, want to trap Jesus. They want Jesus to say something that would get him into trouble. They start by flattering him, by saying that he speaks the truth, irrespective of what people think about him. They then ask him a question. Is it lawful to pay the tax to the emperor or not? The tax here refers to the census tax or poll tax that each person was required to pay. They want Jesus to answer one way or the other. The dilemma Jesus faces is this. If he says yes, then he could be seen as a supporter of Rome justifying the Roman occupation and the oppression of the Jews. The answer would obviously not be popular among the Jewish people and all those who suffered and were trying to oppose Roman rule. A yes answer would definitely alienate them. On the other hand, if Jesus answers no, that this tax should not be paid, then they would in effect, he would in effect be defying Caesar, and they could catch him out on that and report him to the authorities. So we can see it was a loaded question, and Jesus knew this too. Jesus tells them that they're trying to trick him, and he points out their flattery by calling them hypocrites. He then asks them to see the coin that the tax is paid in. He doesn't seem to have any coins himself, but his opponents quickly produce the denarius, which was used to pay the tax. Jesus then puts the question to them, whose image and inscription is on this coin? The answer correctly, the emperor's face and title. Now remember the coin was problematic. The denarius had on the one side Caesar Augustus, Tiberius Caesar, August son of divine Augustus, and then on the other Pontifex Maximus, high priest. It was considered blasphemous, idolatrous, for the emperor's claim to be divine. Jesus then gives his answer to the original question put to him about the need to pay tax. He says, Give then to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and the things that belong to God give to God. It leaves them amazed. Jesus manages to wriggle out of this trap. But what does he actually mean by his answer? Let us consider some implications. Firstly, the political authorities <coughs> are due what is theirs. Some form of government is necessary and the paying of taxes are usually necessary. By participating in the economy and receiving services from the authorities implies taxation should be paid and Jesus seems to acknowledge this. Jesus is not saying, however, that the paying of tax is necessarily expressing moral support for Rome or what it is doing. Jesus may well, in fact, by giving his answer, be limiting the authority of the emperor. Pay them only what is due and no more. We know that Jesus was aware of the problematic nature of taxation, which, while a source of revenue, was also used as a tool to exploit the people. When you think of taxation then, don't think of SARS and mechanisms for the redistribution of wealth. No. Think of the tax collectors with whom Jesus interacted and their reputation for extracting more from the people than was due. 
We know that later Jesus was to challenge the tax system openly in overturning the money changers' tables in the temple. What about giving to God the things that are God's, as Jesus says? Following the words of Psalm 24 verse 1, we are conscious that the earth is God's and all that is in it. There is little that falls outside of God's realm, God's concern. We recognize too that we are made in God's image. That is the image we bear. In giving to God what belongs to God, we give ourselves. We belong to God with our time, our treasure and our talents. And in giving ourselves to God, we give ourselves in service to one another. We belong to one another. People pay taxes to Rome because they were obliged to or forced to do so. However, our commitment to give to God what is God's is our choice. Jesus invites us to make a choice for God's kingdom or reign. We are called to build a different kind of kingdom, one of caring, wholeness, transformation and healing. And it may often clash with Caesar's kingdom. In the area of wealth and possessions, the important thing is where our loyalties lie. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus had said, No one can serve two masters, for a person who is enslaved will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth or mammon. Our loyalties cannot be divided. Those whose main focus is money and things exclude God. Jesus calls us to become detached from our money and possessions and show love and compassion by sharing with those in need. It is not always easy. We have competing allegiances in life that we need to navigate. Consumerism, and materialism always confront us. So finally, in considering our attitude towards the use of money and possessions, let us never forget that all we possess belongs to God, is from God. We are made in God's image. Our attachment is to God. In God we find our identity. God accepts us as we are. We are enough in God's eyes. God affirms us. God loves us. We belong to God and we belong to one another. Amen.